Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and you are here for the first part of my May book haul. So, um, I decided to divide my book haul into two parts because I have accumulated books probably since February that I haven't officially hauled, although you have seen some of them in some videos, um, tags or uh, other videos that I've done. Uh, but I haven't officially hauled them, so I figured it's about time. Um, and I do have quite a few. I have about 10 or 11 in this book haul, in this part of the book haul. And then the second part of the book haul should probably, uh, should probably be up in about two weeks when I have more books that are coming in the mail right now. So without any further ado, let's get going. So the first book that I have to show you guys is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. At first, when I heard about this book, which must have been around two to three years ago, I was kind of ish about it. Honestly, it just seemed very historical and very, uh, just not my type of read. It just, it seemed slow and historical and the cover sort of uh, was kind of depressing. And uh, I don't know, but uh, lately I've just heard so much uh, so much boss around it and because uh, Hannah Kent came up with a new novel called The Good People and she sort of came back to reviews on booktube and people have been talking more and more about her and her work and so when they review The Good People they also reference uh, burial rites or they talk about burial rites and uh, the Good People is actually a, a book that sounds much more like my type of book much more so than this one probably but still, this is like the original recipe, Hannah Kent, and everyone seems to love this book. Um, it actually astounds me that this book has pretty much only positive reviews. So I want to see what the buzz is about. The next book is also quite unusual for me, and that is The Inconvenient Indian, a curious account of native people in North America. This is by Thomas King, and this is unusual for me to purchase and to be really excited about because this is nonfiction. If you know me and you know my reading taste, it's not that I dislike nonfiction. I just don't typically read nonfiction because I do a lot of academic reading. I do mostly academic reading because I am studying to become a psychoanalyst, and it's a lot of studying. It's a, it's a, a very important... Um, it's a very demanding degree that combines a master's and a PhD simultaneously, so it's a lot of work. So I'm not really a big fan of reading nonfiction on top of all the academic reading that I have to do, but this one just seems very interesting and it was in a lot of people's favorites of the, uh, of the, of the year, of last year, I think. Um, Mercedes in particular really loved this and the way that she conveyed her feelings and her uh, reactions to reading this book it just made me purchase it immediately and yeah hopefully I will be able to relate to it even though I am not um, American but Mexico also has a very tragic yet incredibly interesting history of uh, colonization and uh, I think this is going to be a very thought-provoking read and probably when I read it I want to make a separate book review for this one to talk about how I can relate this to my personal experiences and my personal heritage and my uh, Mexican history and hopefully something interesting will come out of reading this. Now something completely different. This is a children's uh, middle grade book. This is Grisham's Farm by Anthony Horowitz. Um, this is just a fun fluffy little book that I can read in a sitting. I chose this one because my students told me to read it. I don't really know what this book is about, but it's it seems like your typical middle grade fantasy with like scary um, elements. The next book I also know nothing about, like really nothing about, but the person that recommended this book was Erica over at Erica's Epilogues, and she is one of those booktubers whose recommendations and whose reading taste in general, I just totally follow because I just totally trust her. 
um, usually would have the same taste and I love what she reads. And she mentioned this book in one of her videos and she claimed it to be one of her absolute all-time favorites and a book that she has reread many times. So I just immediately went uh, to Amazon, looked it up. It was kind of difficult to get because it's American and it's kind of a... Uh, it's not so easy to get, but I did, and now I finally have it here. And this is Fall on Your Knees. This is by um, Anne-Marie MacDonald, and I know nothing about it, it except it's some sort of family drama. It's, uh, it says, the Piper family is steeped in secrets, lies, and unspoken truths. At the eye of the storm is one secret that threatens to shake their lives and even destroy them etc 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 so yeah this is a big book so maybe for the summer next up we have a book that has probably my favorite cover of the moment and that is human acts by han kang let's take one second one minute one moment one hour to appreciate this cover it's so simple so simple no embossed crap in here no metallic whatevers, just plain and simple. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I love this one. Um, I really enjoyed The Vegetarian, which is, of course, the winner of the International Man Booker Prize, also by Han Kang, also translated by, uh, what's her name? Uh, I always forget her name, Deborah Smith. And this one, from what I hear, is all, it's, it's more social, it's more influenced by social and political events that actually happened somewhere uh, in Asia, <laughs> somewhere. I'm just really bad at geography <laughs> and history and whatever. Um, but yeah, I've heard that this one is very gritty, it's really hard to read, and it just sounds like my type of, of, of thing, because talking about this very destructive, greedy raw things, aggression, through the most lyrical, beautiful writing, this is what art can show us. This is what art can do. Next up is another novel I know nothing about. <laughs> There's a trend in here. I I pretty much, I, I just buy books because I hear about them. I don't really know what I'm buying or what I'm gonna read, I just do. <laughs> Uh, so this is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is by Ken Kesey. Uh, Kesey? And I really like this edition. It's like a graphic novel cover and back cover. And uh, it has the really beautiful French flaps. This is a Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. This is kind of a, well, a classic, a modern classic. I know nothing about it except it is kind of illustrated. It is... It, it takes place in a hospital, a mental hospital, I, I guess. Um, it has a movie adaptation featuring an important actor. I don't remember who it is. Um, I don't really know anything about the movie. I've never seen it. Um, I don't know anything about the book. I just know it has fantastic reviews on Goodreads. Um, and it has a foreword by Chuck Palahniuk. So that's enough for me to get excited about this book. Next up, we have Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This is another beautiful cover. This one is a little bit fancier than Human Acts. This one actually does have like embossed metallic uh, th uh, things. And uh, yeah, it's kind of fancier. Um, this one is, of course, by Neil Gaiman, who is one of my favorite authors. Uh, just in general, I love the man. He has written some of my favorite books. And this is about Norse mythology. I loved American Gods. I loved uh, Anansi. What's its, its name? Anansi. Anansi's Boys. Anansi Boys. And I just love how he plays with mythology. And I just want to see what he does with Norse mythology, which he kind of has already talked about with uh, American Gods. But uh, these are, I think, these are more uh, short stories. This is a collection of short stories using Norse mythology as a foundation. Then this book I am so excited about. This is a book that I have always been intimidated by. Honestly, when I decided to pick it up from Amazon, it was expensive and it was 
just so daunting that I I really struggled making the decision. If I buy this, if I get this book, I will have to read it. I don't know if I'm smart enough to read it. I don't know if I am literate enough to read it. It's just one of those books, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to really get it. But everyone loves it. And it won the Man Booker Prize. And I usually like the the stuff that is, you know, shortlisted for the Man Booker. So this is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This sounds spectacular. The writing style is supposed to be great. It's a big book, though. And it's a commitment. I'm willing to make a commitment, absolutely, if it sparks my interest. Um, from what I gather, from what I understand, Marlon James has written a novel that sort of uses some real events that happened and then f uses that to fictionalize some other narratives or to um, create some fictional narratives. And this is told through multiple points of view, multiple characters, narratives, and they almost feel like short stories that are telling one story. That sounds amazing. And this is a beautiful book. We only have three more to go. I swear I'm going to be quick. Um, this one is another nonfiction, but it's kind of a cheat nonfiction because it's nonfiction about reading fiction. This is Howard's End. Uh, no, Howard's End is on the landing. A year of reading from home. This is by Susan Hill. I love the cover. It's so cool. And Susan Hill is, of course, the author of The Woman in Black and some other uh, stories and gothic literature. And she, from what I gather, this is her account of spending one year reading books from her bookshelf, from her library, um, as she once was in her personal library at home, and she realized all the books that she hadn't read, and so she just, she just started reading, and I really want to see what she read and what she tells us about um, in here. Next up is a book that seems just fun and wacky and weird and funny um, and hysterical and just mad and this is The Gentleman by Forrest Leo. Um, I know that this has something to do with the devil and it's kind of written as a gothic tale but it's also kind of a satire or, or like a very sarcastic funny book. Um, it says... It just says it's action-packed and very, very funny. The Gentleman is a devil of a good time. And I started reading the first chapter and I just read the first paragraph and I loved it. Uh, it says, my name is Lionel Savage. I am 22 years old. I am a poet and I do not love my wife. I loved her once, not without cause, but I do not anymore. She's vapid, timid, a querulous creature. And I find after six months of married life that my position has become quite intolerable and I am resolved upon killing myself. So this is supposed to be really funny. It's not great literature. It's not, you know, a classic, but, you know. And then finally, another book that I am really looking forward to because everyone has loved it. This is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. This has a beautiful cover, a beautiful package overall. And it's, from what I gather, from what I understand, this is about a family tragedy, something that happens revolving an accident with a mother and children, and something horrible happens that really uh, changes the way that this family lives. And we get to see this story told from different points of view and through different periods of time, sort of back and forth. Um, which is something that I usually enjoy. So that's Idaho by Emily Roscovich. And that is it. I hope this book haul is not ridiculously long. I'm sorry. Um, I try to be as succinct as possible. Stay tuned for my second part of this very exciting May book haul.